Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Christ Consciousness. Well, I want to talk about the uselessness of pretty much everything in life uh, and how nobody pays attention to solutions. They want to continue to be in, we got to find answers when the answers are laying in front of them. I've talked about this before, but I'm going to continue to talk about it uh, because I think people need to hear this many times. Now, the bottom line is, is that everybody thinks that we are searching for solutions to things. It's similar to my change in attitude of the fact that I am not researching, I'm developing. I don't need any further research. I know what works. I have to put it into workable um products that people can access and these products have to be uh, of different levels there has to be affordable ones there has to be super advanced ones so all of this is part of the process so i'm not researching i'm developing now the problem is the entire world is basically in the development stage we have the answers to everything yet we as i said this before we go there and we have the answer to something and what happens Nothing happens. People, you present, they put it, here's the answer. Basically, you can see this is a starving, thirsty man. You bring him food, you put it on the table, and he says, I don't want that food or drink. Well, what are you talking about? You're starving. You need this now. I don't want it. So, to the point is, is that it actually causes the death of that person. Now, what would you call that? Insanity? Well, that's right. So we have it. We have free energy right now. And there's, there's so many types of free energy, it isn't even joking. It isn't even funny. But we do have a very usable, very easy, very adaptable to our environment uh, um, energy generation, which we've had for years. And that's called hydrogen power. This is not a question. This is not, it works. It works now. We can use it tomorrow. And it works with all the engines we already have. The internal combustion engine can be converted to hydrogen so we have a, so what does that mean? Well, that's what generators are. They're internal combustion engines. That's what cars are. Generators in general, which spin, cause heat or whatever, can all be powered through hydrogen tomorrow. No believe that. No, it's not good enough. Place it in front of you on the table. You're starving. You got to have this. And you just take your hand and knock it off the table. But it's not as easy as that because there's massive um, corruption involved because the people in power don't want something, they want oil. The entire world is run by oil, whether we like it or not. Every major power from Russia to the United States is selling oil and that's how they run their economy. Very sad. So, how do you deal with stuff like that? We have the same situation with healing. Everything could be healed, but they refuse to do it. Why are we refusing to take, to take known healing that doesn't hurt anybody, or even if it does, to prove whether it works or not. Why aren't we doing that? Again, it's madness. Here's the cure. You're going to die. Who cares? Throw that away. Now, it has to go through Bill over here because he has to qualify it. So this is the way everything works, and it will never, ever change. And what we're looking at is the other stupid things. And, of course, I'm moving away from a lot of that, but I'm still doing some of my... Uh, research into certain areas that are particularly uh, interest in terms of uh, all of these satanic cults which have uh, gotten stronger over the years not weaker so we have all these problems that uh, we have to look at which is a side but what does that do the existence you know when people want to have take the porno news again and look at satanic cults and say how much uh, effect they have so well you know most there there's, these are a tiny group of people, and ultimately, the people committing all the crimes are people that are not involved. Uh, and we're talking about all the big crimes, military crime, white-collar crime, government crime, all the things that are really based in corruption. These people are Satanists. They don't believe in anything but money. I mean, ultimately, it's evil, but it is something that is not, they're not worshiping anybody. So all of these sexy crimes out there, the porno crimes, uh, are done by a tiny group of people. And I'm not really sure why they even bother with that, but it seems to be part of this, uh, you know, if you do enough evil, I think you attract that kind of thinking. So the point is, is that we've had massive amounts of 
uh, pedophilia apparently organized by government uh, for a hundred years now and cults that seem to be doing this for whatever their very sick motive are. And I don't think it has anything to do with uh, Satan directly. Uh, the debased practices that are done here are done by people who are very debased. They're basically evil and we need to move away from Satanism to evilism. People are evil and they're in every ranks of your society, the things that have been done. So what are we doing looking at these things? Why are we trying to talk to scientists to get them to understand their role? Well, they're never going to happen. It's a waste of time. So what you have to do is move ahead in your own. So it's all a bunch of false worlds. And the bottom line is nobody wants to look at it. It's amusing with these actual um, investigators, which seems to be a whole group of people that are investigating uh, events like the Son of Sam, David Berkowitz, that happened 40 years ago. All the information is worthless. doesn't matter whether somebody pinpoints or whether Berkowitz says this guy was involved in it. It's never going to happen. And I don't know how we can believe this psychotic person to begin with. Uh, it has no value. Nobody's going to pick that up and prosecute somebody 40 years later. Now, certain things happen after the publish of books and other things, but they all tend to fall. You know, they'll make a little statement and then nothing happens. You have to assign people to cases. So are you going to assign people to a 40-year-old case over what's happening in the street now? To give the police credit in that area it would be ridiculous. Also, why aren't we investigating not that crime, but... What is behind that crime? Meaning, what are all these cults? And apparently, the minute you start getting into that, uh, you get fired. Um, there is no records. There is a stone wall you hit, uh, which could even endanger your life. So it's a waste of time. So what is going on? Now, people aren't investigating behind it. They're not investigating uh, these cults that are doing things. They, they want to give you porno news again. Oh, it's David. It's uh, Michael Aquino. Yeah, it's all his fault. It's the processor church. It's all their fault, which was operating in their uh, weirdness for probably only five or six years. They, they kept changing the organization because it didn't work too well. And their roots are Scientology, which is interesting as well. But these are all red herrings. They don't mean anything. Both of these, this uh, Michael Aquino has never been charged with anything uh, that was, he was prosecuted for. All charges, he had one charge against him that was dropped. The Process Church, as far as I know, had no charges against them whatsoever and has operated now for about 60 years. Yet people keep going there looking for something that apparently doesn't exist. There, of course, there are questions with all these people. But the bottom line is what? That is not your job as some sort of writer, investigator. That's part of, uh, should be investigations that should be funded by uh, law enforcement agencies. And if they're not going to investigate, then we're never going to have any prosecutions because it has to go through them to formulate a case to do it. So it's a waste of time. So I'm not sure what these people are all about, but they're also a bunch of cowards who won't look into what's happening today. You want to find out what happened 40 years ago, well, find out what those cults are doing today. And there's nobody doing that. Not only that, they're, they want to grab somebody who's easy and safe. Oh, the Processed Church, yeah, that 60-year-old organization that's now helping animals. Oh, yeah, well, that's, gonna, that's, that's a safe place to go, isn't it? And they really haven't investigated them either because they know nothing is going on there. And the problem is the same thing with Michael Aquino. Now, the point is, is that there's a sketchy reality to him in lots of ways, and he writes stuff that makes himself look good. But the bottom line is this guy has been a noted military intelligence officer for 40 years and never had any problems except one uh, charge against him during a time of heightened publicity about Satanism. And those charges were dropped like it was dropped with everybody else at the, quote, Presidio. There were two people that were uh, had charges against them, but all of them were dropped. Every single one of them. And it wasn't Aquino that had all. It was the daycare worker, the Baptist minister, the ex-Baptist minister, who started out with 60 different charges against him. That went down to one, and then that was dismissed. 
There was one against Aquino, and that was dismissed as well. And the Army did not pay out on his case uh, directly. The, then the minister who attacked him, uh, accusing him of this, with his two-year-old child, two to three years old, um, sued and got a certain civil a settlement of about 350 grand. So that's what happened in that case, which is what people do, and I discuss that. If you want more information on that, do follow my Aquino stuff because I go into great detail with all this because people need to know that. It's cheaper to um, actually settle than it is to fight it in court. Let's remember that as well. And that's, you know, that's what everything comes down to ultimately. But the point is, is that you bring people healing. This heals people. It's proven. We know it. It's been around for 50, 100 years. Now, I... Psh, off the table. Here's free energy. Everybody can have it. <laughs> and people to this day are so stupid that they keep looking into. And of course, I'm convinced, particularly uh, that all these alternative energy people, these zero point energy people, are all controlled by and paid off by the CIA. One of these people who's been known in the industry for years is working with Satanists. Well, isn't that interesting? And this person has never done anything or finished anything. They keep putting this out. And as far as I allege, uh, this person in particular is part of the bought off military industrial. He, he is an asset. He's owned. And how many people are in? This is what happens with everything. So the bottom line is that if you have something, let's see it work. But there's never. I've been following free energy for years. And all of these gimmicks and things, whether they work or not, is unimportant. They never get anywhere. We have something that works that is irrefutable, and nobody seems to do it. Every single car manufacturer in the world has a hydrogen car and has for over 35 years. Why aren't we using it? No, well, we, yeah, I'm, Mosh, yeah, ooh, I'm the madman. Let's have electric cars and battery. Ooh. So, you know, the, 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 this guy is a complete nut job and has never done anything. This is obviously a push in the front. He wants to say how advanced he is, yet he's making battery-operated cars. What? Not fuel cells, battery operated. Now, fuel cells mean that you have a perpetual hydrogen generator. Now, these are known, they work, and they're not problematical. As a matter of fact, they have been running buses in the city of Palm Springs for 40 years. Oh, we can't do that. I'm going to buy Twitter. Well, I hope you're going to do it with your brother, who's part of the big Illuminati, who did everything. So, the guy who was in the financial industry that um, helped you acquire PayPal, which had nothing to do with you. But it was a great business to get at that time, and you got very rich from it, because it was all designed anyway. So, <laughs> so we all know what's, uh, what the true story there is. But see, you don't know that, and you, you think that this, you know, I had people argue with me what a genius this guy is. So, yeah. And 150-year-old technology. Yeah, but he's made a battery special. He spits in it, and then he pees on it, and it generates more energy. It's really high tech. So all of that comes down to this nonsense. Is there. So what are we supposed to do if everything is scraped off? So the uselessness of doing that. So the whole idea is that with all these cases that um, numerous books are written on, and I will highlight a few other ones, but I'm moving away from it. I don't need to read about the injustices of the world. I don't need to know that. Um, I know it's there, and nothing is ever done. Now, should somebody uh, recognize that, put it in a book? Well, I think that's a good idea. I don't know how valid these books are. Most everything given to people are hearsay. I talked to that guy, and he told me, well, what does that mean? Somebody's going to tell you what they want. People are on the impression that they sit uh, at a, across a table for money with a beer or a cup of coffee, that somehow this person's going to tell you everything. They're going to cleanse their soul. Well, that's really not the case at all. It's nonsense. It's hearsay. It's that one person's opinion. How valid is it? Well, it's not valid at all. You have to take that one person's opinion and try and have somebody else state, yeah, yeah I saw the same thing. Ah, that's research. Now you've got something different that has some value to it because you have now uh, verified it or got another. And that's how you get things generally done, even though that in itself is not 100% uh, proof. But if someone says, yeah, we all did that there, and you talk to five people and you verified this was happening, well, that's certainly a good start. Now, the bigger picture, I don't know.
but uh, because things are never as straightforward as they appear. But it's a waste of time. Why is it a waste of time? You get this research, you can name names of most of these cases now. It's, 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 it's humorous when you look at these cases, from the son of Sam to Michael Aquino uh, to all the remote viewers out there that talk about when they were remote viewing in 1980. 40 years ago, old garbage information that has been cleared by the CIA. Well, that doesn't tell us anything. Let's get into what's happening new. But, you know, they can't talk about that. That's all covered. You know, um, SRI with Yuri Geller was unable to release any of their information until 40 years after what happened. I think it was 35, 40, whatever the actual date is. But you're talking about nobody cares. You know, anything over five or 10 years, nobody cares. It's an old story. So when all these tapes were released and information was released on Yuri Geller, who's always been said that this guy's just a con, nobody paid attention to it. Well, that's the same old story, isn't it? So none of it matters. And when we get old information of uh, Joe McConnell um, remote viewing a Russian submarine in 1980s, who cares? All this stuff is kind of nebulous. There's nothing happening now. People aren't coming out with potent information. And you have to wonder why they're not. And I'm not talking about military stuff. Why don't they just remote view something now that we can verify that has social value? Well, none of this happens. So it's all old stuff. So what happens? And what happens if you remove remote view? What happens if you find out who's behind these and you name names? Well, a lot of people have been named names. And it really hasn't done anything. People name all sorts of people. And there is either a huge cover-up, which I think is part of it, or it's a lot of faulty information. It's a lot of disinformation, a lot of lies, which apparently um, Michael Aquino has been hooked up to everything to have to do with torture. Nobody else, there's no other officers, he does everything, and of course his face is all over TV. Well, you know, that don't add up to me. Why aren't there other people named? Why aren't there other uh, intelligent? No, he's the fall guy, and that's the way they want it. Whether he agrees with it or not, that's who's been out. So when people identify, they identify him. Why? Because he's on TV. It makes you sound like your story is correct. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much links to do anything. And let's say there is. Now, there's some people out there that think that they talked to the shoeshine boy and they got the information they needed because... That kid knows everything. Well, I don't buy that whatsoever. But what is the bigger problem here? The bigger problem is we have a society that is marred up to its eyebrows in corruption. And nothing is being done about it. So we could solve all our problems tomorrow by starting massive, controlled, anti-corruption organizations. Every organization should have anti-corruption. Now, we did this in the police departments called Internal Affairs. When was the last time you heard from Internal Affairs? So apparently that doesn't work, so we need to have outside. How do you do this? How do you take a corrupt, evil species and try and make good people out of them? Well... I don't know. I mean, the CIA claims that they go to Salt Lake City and they get a bunch of Mormons who are supposed to be less corruptible, apparently, which I don't believe for a second. But the bottom line is, is that everybody wants to say how bad the CIA is, but they're constantly out there recruiting people. And, you know, what was, uh, well, I find an interesting statement by Michael Aquino is the fact that the CIA people that he worked with, and he did work with them, he's made these statements out of his own mind. He worked with several intelligence agencies, which I guess makes sense to me. I'm kind of confused why they would be working with the army, but I guess, you know, they're all fed. They're all working together. I'm just wondering why that's the case. But apparently he's admitted to all this, uh, working with many people, except the NSA, which he claims he didn't work with and didn't like. Everybody says he worked for the NSA. Is he lying? I don't know. How do you tell? So um, they claim they go to that. So the, the, the CIA is trying to find people who are honest and who follow a higher code of God because they can be trusted and less corruptible. Well, isn't that interesting? Because you don't hear that from the CIA. Are there bad eggs in the CIA? Well, there is. And there's a lot of CIA agents who have spent their entire life uh, trying to help and protect the country from a bunch of baddies out there. But the problem is, is we don't know who the baddies are anymore. So... Um, 
That's an interesting statement from them. And this is a statement of fact. We know they are all over Utah and the colleges there recruiting people. It's common knowledge, and uh, that's where a lot is. So what percentage of the CIA are now these non-drinker, humpers, chocolate-eating uh, Mormons uh, with their fancy underwear on? Well, they're certainly trying to make a large percentage of that. Doesn't that go against this? Shouldn't they be looking for corrupt people? So the whole idea is that we just don't get all this stuff. None of it do we get. So it's hard to figure out what the truth is here. But what is the problem here? What is, why don't we have prosecutions of people like Michael Aquino, if he's so guilty? Why don't we grab the process church? Why haven't we found all the other people? And it's, you know, it's pretty transparent out there, the kind of maniacs that are everywhere. And they're not overly hiding. And they're getting special treatments from courts and everything else. These... Uh, groups and of course we've had organized crime and crime and uh, has been running uh, every time organized crime runs everything it's just as simple as that they have the power and the money and they buy everybody it's as simple as that and this has been going on since the beginning of time i'm sure we could go back to the roman empire and find out well who really had power there well, I bet we could find out that there were certain. But, you know, they just fought it, it internally all the time. One problem with the Roman Empire it was just one civil war after another. Uh, people want to pl blame, oh, these other people came in and they didn't conquer them, those Arabs that came in there, uh, those uh, Aryan Arabs who came in there. Well, the, Rome was horribly weakened through civil wars for literally hundreds of years, but they still ran the world for 600 years. And everything we have today is based on what the Romans did. The true, quote, white people, which uh, are out there. So which are the Greeks, the original Greeks, Romans, Celts, etc. This, of course, has changed radically if you want to claim that. But it doesn't really matter what culture they were or race. They really had nothing to do with anything. But that just happened to be a fact of things. But, of course, they get a lot of their information from... Uh, the Egyptians who got it from the Atlanteans who were kind of a quasi-understanding of whom they were. But well, without getting stuck in that uh, talk there. So what is the problem here? Why does none of this work? Why do all records uh, disappear? Uh, floods, fires, etc. And apparently there's no backup, and particularly with these paper documents. And I wonder how much uh, is actually been um, digitalized. You know, I've heard many times that uh, certain, particularly federal law enforcement, don't have modern equipment. They don't have good computers. Uh, all of these things uh, have been stated in the past of that, you know, they don't get funding for that. People want salaries. They don't want a new computer necessarily. So we don't know. We don't know what's going on uh, with all these things. But what's the problem there in general? Well, the problem there in general is pretty blatant. And that is the fact that it's corruption again. So you find all this information. We find out uh, who these nefarious, horrible, satanic cults are. We know the people who ran them. We even get names of the people who murdered people 40 years ago, who are probably dead now. Most of them are. Michael Aquino's dead. So uh, most of the people in the Son of Sam are dead. Um, so the whole idea is that, and, and the leaders, or at least many of the leaders of the process church are dead, including uh, the original founder, Mary Ann, who died in 25. Apparently, um, one of the original leaders is still alive, but you know he's 86. What does that mean? He's not working for them. But the point is, is that these people aren't even alive. Are we going to go and prosecute somebody who's 80 years old now or 86? Well, I mean, there's just a lot of stupidity there. Uh, but in general, you know, justice should be done. But that's not going to happen. There's certain practical information. But the other reason is there's huge amounts of corruption. You uh, prosecute that person. And he says, yeah, well, yeah, you're going to put me in prison? Well, I'm going to tell you all the people that I paid off and you're, how many cops are bad and everything else. I mean, this is why people end up dead like Epstein. Epstein had to be killed because he just knew too much. All he had to do was start talking and naming names, and it's going to bring down a whole bunch of people. So all of this stuff uh, becomes, so do we know what's going on or we're going to ever, no, we're not. So it's, it's a folly we need to, what do we need to fix? 
we need to fix all the corruption and we need to set up massive investigatory organizations, somehow keeping them clean. And I'm not sure you can do that because everybody's dirty. So how do you set up an investigative committees who look into things who aren't bought off and everything? But that's what we need. We need to stop corruption. We need to change a lot of laws. The politicians should not be able to invest in companies that they then pass laws to make more money with. And apparently this is legal from what was told to me. That has to be changed. We have to change usury laws. We have these, but you know, banks can't charge what they want. Like, there are laws against not enforced. And the other thing is that we have so many laws, but they're just not enforced. California has double the laws that most countries have. Double. So we have all these laws, but for what? And they tend to start causing horrible entanglements, uh, but nothing seems to be enforced. We've got some horrible corruption going on on every single level. And people are trying to do things on one level, but you know everybody spins things off and it's done deliberately. You start off with a good idea, you're infiltrated, and it turns into a bad one that even may be illegal that you've been trapped in. California is trying to break the banking laws now by creating their own banks, which would be a very smart way to go. Uh, we need to break the banking industry, who has never done anything for anybody but put lots of money in their pocket. I mean, when you really get down to it, uh, most people get mortgages through federal programs. Fannie Mae, all these things. Well, these are insurance programs where you go in there and government-sponsored their bonds and then you buy a house and you go through the program. That way, the bank doesn't take any risk whatsoever. Oh, it's just enraging that this kind of nonsense would go on. So the enraging nonsense of it all, it goes back to the corruption. So we have to fix all this. It's easily fixed. We can easily raise um, income sources by uh, taxing things that nobody would matter, like a penny on every stock trans. Action on. That would generate hundreds of billions of dollars. There's lots of things that can be taxed that don't hurt people like gasoline and other things. Uh, there should be national lotteries and gambling should be taxed so that these money go to social programs and they can only go to social, only go to medical uh, for people, only go to housing. And this can be done easily and it doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, this is a fallacy to think that uh, taxes have to be terrible. But point is, is that most taxes within the United States, including sales tax, is very low. The average sales tax in Europe is 20%. 20% when you buy a stereo, a TV, 20%. Now, in the United States, it averages around 7 or 8% uh, of the typical state taxes. And there should be a federal tax as well of a small amount so that everything sold, uh, the federal government gets a certain amount of that money and it has to be earmarked for very particular projects, not the military, not pork barrel. It has to go to the health fund, the road fund, whatever it is that is important to that particular thing, and that you can do easily. So these are all ways of easily solving problems. Nobody would be hurt by it. Matter of fact, we could lower taxes on things that hurt people, like gasoline and other things. A lot of people are dependent on that. It comes out of their pocket, truckers and other people and all of it. But all of that could be ended. And if we had real alternative energy, we wouldn't have to pay any of it. Just imagine if you're a trucker or an airline, and the number one cost in airlines past personnel is fuel. So the whole idea is, imagine if you didn't have to pay that. Imagine if you didn't have an electric bill every month, which people are now paying in the hundreds for. Imagine if you had $200 a month to spend. So all of that is there. Imagine if you had gasoline in there, that could be two, three hundred dollars a month. Just imagine what you could buy with that to stimulate the economy. And that's all ready to go right now. We have all this stuff. We have alternative fuels. We have alternative cars. Nobody is doing it and it's hurting the entire world. We could set up a hydrogen generator anywhere on this planet to help all those people that need to have water pumped out of the ground, that need to have lighting, all the things that uh, people in the West take for granted is that most of the world is still living in a hut somewhere. Really sad. But it all can happen within uh, the United States. Why doesn't it? Because it's all corruption. So we need to do something about that. So nothing's going to change. You come with the 100% proof of what's going on with all these um, 
pedophile rings, all these Satanists are causing trouble. What do you think is going to happen? Nobody's going to do anything about them because of corruption. And of course, everybody is paid off. And if you're one of the few good people, and the key word there is few, well, you're not going to get any support whatsoever. And it may even go to the point that you get killed or retired as so many. All of this is part of what's going on, and we have to take care of that first. If we take care of corruption and we start funding projects the way we should, and uh, when America was great in the 50s, the uh, basic tax rate on the rich was 90%. Well, doesn't that tell you something in the 50s and 60s and even the 70s when people were doing much better as a country that the tax rates were much higher? So all of these things we have to look into and find out uh, how to implement these very simple things, but nobody wants to do it. Why can't we tax every stock trade? What's the problem? People are paying all sorts of fees. You pay fees to a stockbroker every time you trade a stock. Well, couldn't 10 cents more be charged and that go to the country? Why are we giving technology away? Uh, if you pay for things like uh, the guidance systems, well, that was paid for by the American people and then given to people. Why is that given to people? Any discoveries that the American taxpayers uh, develop with their money, they should be paid royalties back to the country to replace that money and to benefit from it. You shouldn't be able to use the American flag, the um, uh, governmental, the White House seals or whatever. That should be owned by the government. And if you want to use it, you pay a fee for it. These are the type of things that you do. It's very simple and nobody is hurt by it. People want to tell you that there's too much taxes. It's all nonsense. Uh, it's just, it just doesn't work. We have problems even with uh, the bad taxation, which is happening in California, where 50% of the cost of marijuana now is all taxes. Well, that's ridiculous. That's an abuse of power and driving up the product. Now you'd say, well, that's okay, too bad. Let them pot smoking hippies pay their fees. Well, the bottom line is that's not what happens. People can't keep their businesses going. And what happens is, ironically, is that I've always been in favor of legalization because it tends to drive the criminals out. We need to legalize a lot of stuff, prostitution, etc. Make these real jobs where people are inspected, where they have to have permits, where they pay taxes. Make sure everybody does that so that the society runs better instead of making it illegal uh, and causing so many problems that I won't get into here. But what happened is now um, the drug dealers are back. <laughs> because they can sell the pot much cheaper because there's no taxes on it. And a lot of stores have to sell through the back door now to stay in business. Isn't that ironic? Because that's an abuse of it. Taxes need to be reasonable, need to be across the board, and they have to go to specific purposes. And this can easily be done. And way too many people have way too much and are not taxed anywhere near enough. So um, this is all the things that have to change and can be done. So, but it's the uselessness of it. What's the problem? I've said it a hundred times. I'm going to keep saying it to the end of my days. And we ne must end corruption. As soon as we end corruption, everything works. It's just as simple as that. Laws are enforced. People are the, um, uh, the, all the society problems are ended because it's pretty much we have spent a long time as a civilization putting together laws and people to enforce them so that society runs correctly so there is a law against anything that is basically bad some people may think that's bad in itself but the bottom line is there is law there and we spend billions of, I, don't, I don't know how many trillions go to the so-called law enforcement from what I understand, they spend uh, with drug enforcement, the, their uh, drugs are about $20 billion industry, yet we spend $100 billion fighting that. Something is wrong here. And everybody says, well, we don't have money for anything. We have money for everything. And anytime something happens, uh, your government runs out there and throws millions, hundreds of millions of dollars at that particular situation. So obviously there's money somewhere. It's just that there isn't money for um, what is really needed. 
These are the problems we have out there. It's just as simple as that. So it's not complicated. There's lots of ways to raise money without hurting people. There's lots of ways to take care of people's human rights, the right to a decent education, the right to a decent place to live, and a right, a right to decent uh, medical care. I mean, these are human rights. Everybody should have them. Past that, it depends on how much you want to work for. You want a big house, you want a fancy car, well, you're going to have to go out there and earn it. It's not given to you. But all this doesn't seem to get through people's pea brains. But there's plenty of ways to raise capital to take care of the necessity things in life. There should nobody that ever goes hungry or doesn't have their medicine that they need. This is evil to the highest degree, and we allow it to happen all the time. And it has nothing to do with money because there's endless money out there. We have a trillion dollars to give to a military. What, we, we can't take 50 billion of that away, which is a drop in the bucket, and do proper things with it? We don't even have a space program. We can't even put a rocket there. Now that the Russians aren't doing it, we can't get into space. And we better be careful because all those people in the space station up there are marooned because there's no ships that can go up there. Isn't that interesting? Now, who's the bozo that did that? Well, it goes back to a long way of turning over our rocket system to Nazis to begin with. But the point is, is that we have these problems that why don't we have these facilities? This doesn't make any sense whatsoever. We turned over rocket science to a record producer, a bookseller, and, a, and basically a guy who um, is now involved in electric cars, but basically started as a website designer. <laughs> Well, there's national security like this, and we, uh, we do this. We don't have a rocket program. Wow. So all of this uh, is critically important to understand what's going on. And everything can be easily done. And it doesn't mean that everybody has to pay huge amounts of taxes. You make sure that you tax things, and you reduce taxes on things that <coughs> people actually need, like gasoline and other things. Uh, all of that can be reduced as we tax other areas that uh, can easily be taxed because of the volume of it, and people can get all that money uh, to use for specific programs. And we can't just dump this money in the coffers of a government who is going to steal it, who's not going to use it properly. It has to go for this particular use. And these are human rights, and if we don't give people human rights, they're going to corrupt them just by the fact. People are going to have to make money any way they can, and that's the way it goes. The problem is the rich people never have enough money, and they keep exploiting everybody. But nothing's going to happen. So you can get all the evidence you want. You can get all the great free energy, all the answers to everything we need. You can get all the criminals lined up. Here they are. Here's the uh, proof that they are done all these horrible things, and... What you're going to get is what you get with when you plop down workable uh, energy systems. You're going to get the usual nonsense. It's just swept off the table and ignored. Well, we have all this. What's the problem? No, we don't. We're not interested in that. Next. That's what's happening. So what do you do with a society like that? Well, you, this is the big, big problem. But the bottom line is, is there's no use investigating old, stupid cases, uh, talking about remote viewing from the 1980s, and even prior to that, in the 70s, where they talk about what was happening in Russia and what the, the book that was written. Uh, all of this stuff is a little bit ridiculous. Not a little bit, a lot. The whole idea is it doesn't matter what you do because it'll never be implemented. Why won't it be implemented? Because of corruption. So what do we have to work on? We have to work on it. The rest of this stuff, I don't care how many facts you get. We got books by the thousands that document facts uh, that are totally ignored. From science to society to criminal activity. Nobody cares. And everybody works with them from, uh, from the top down. The point is, is that everything is run by these criminals in one way or another, and nobody wants them. But that's corruption. It just never works. So what happens is everybody's out there trying to make more money because everything in life is expensive, and people are really working at a very low level. They want fancy cars, fancy dinners, and everything that goes with it. They want to be at the basis level of everything, and uh, they will be corrupt to get that. It's not a fact about getting by or even having extra things, but it's difficult. I mean, you want to send your children to college? Well, that could cost $100,000. Where are you going to get that from? Well, it's going to be very difficult. 
So, and uh, what about medical bills? Because that's not covered. Well, this forces people into corruption to meet even basic needs. So until we handle this and we handle the corruption and we put together stability systems so people don't have all their money stolen by the medical industry, because that's really what happens now. Uh, you get into debt medically, they take everything you have, and that's it. And usually that happens in later in life when you don't. Uh, when you're at a later age. That's how it all works. And um, this is uh, really sad. So people then become corrupt to avoid that. So it's not complicated. That's the answers to everything. There's ways to easily put in taxes. That hurts nobody. Lower other taxes and have a much higher tax on the wealthy that are just swimming in money. Uh, but we need the uh, government to step in a properly regulated, law-abiding government, ooh, now you're talking fantasy, Thor, um, to take care of these things which are a national interest. Nobody would say that the military should be funded by others. The government funds the military, and nobody has a problem for that. All these so-called conservative types don't think there's anything wrong with that. Well, that's socialism. That's communism. All of our money goes to the military, and it's taken from each individual, well, what kind of nonsense is that? But when you say, well, we should do that for medical, they have a problem. Oh, that, that's communism. That shows you didn't. Well, so is your military budgets, which we don't need. And the entire military we have is a complete joke around the world. And nobody spends the money like the United States does. Everybody else is spending tiny amounts of their gross national product on their military. Uh, but they don't have to because Big Daddy Uncle Sam comes in and just ploops down that. It's just, it's just unbelievable. So all of these things is uh, the, the problem, but it can be easily solved. So the problem is, is that this solution is like everything else. You put it on the table and say, hey, look, this solves all the problems. Next, swept off the table. That's it. So that's the society we live in. And what do we do about it? Well, um, it's very difficult. There are ways to make changes, but nobody wants it. People vote. Uh, the vote is a waste of time. We can't get any common representatives in there. So once a sick system gets as sick as this, you know, it's just waiting to... The problem is how many people is it going to take with it? And what is the cost of this death? But there is no way of fixing things. So I don't know where it goes from here. Uh, certainly, uh, we can always wish for a giant comet the size of the moon or maybe bigger to hit this planet and destroy it once and for all because it's really a pus of stinking fluid in the universe that needs to be eradicated. The human species has been manipulated into the evilest that there is. So what do we do about it? Well, we can fix things when we do it correctly. Who can do this? Who would have honesty? Who could uh, uh, go against the system and stay as an uncorrupted organization? Well, it's not within human capacity, and we're living in hell, so we have to understand things are not going to work out. So what do we get back to? We get back to the fact that, well, you try and do as much good as you can, but people aren't good. People go the least past of resistance, supporting evil all the time. You know, life is a giant machine full of all these little wheels. And the point is, is that the wheels are the individual people. And they're spinning to keep the big machine going. And that's the reality of it. So, so what you got to do is things on your own. The main thing is you support people, organizations that you agree with what you're doing. You try to empower yourself personally and you try and stay out of the problems that uh, is being part of this government. But, you know, the whole idea is that that's difficult to do, as we've seen with vaccinations. They'll come after you one way or another. But the whole idea is that there are lots of things you can do and everybody has to try and do what they can uh, to support people who are doing things of value, whatever that is. You vote with your pocketbook. You buy organic, pure foods. You don't buy meats. You do things that try and change the attitude. When you build financial markets that support certain industries, well, you change the industries. So if you're eating non-meat-based products, well, the meat industry goes down. Less torture, less animals put through that, less uh, toxicity in general. When you support organic farmers, it means they're using less toxic chemicals. And it goes on and on. You vote with your pocketbook. That's how. So you find a good product that works well and you support that. That's how it all goes.
and you, that evolves the world to a degree. But you got to be very careful there as well because everything is tricky dicky there too. But that's how you do things on a day to day local level, and then you try and empower yourself personally. You're using certain technologies. You're keeping. Um, positive energy fields around you for success and for health and this is how you weather the storm and you do what you can but don't believe anybody the stories you get from everybody and everybody falls into this category of listening to the people who have been lying you people believe the news media over the ukraine uh when they don't believe it on anything else well why should you believe a media that's been lying to you all this time all of a sudden they've changed and you're getting the right story well, that don't make any sense. You shouldn't believe anybody. It's just a, all of it's a giant fraud. Everything is engineered, and that's as simple as that. So you have to work from that. You know, people jump on things, then you get pundits or idiots that go online and talk about so many things. Now, the recent thing, of course, is the Bob Saget death, which is now trying to, everything's a conspiracy. Uh, he was beat up, he was in a fight. Uh, all this kind of stuff, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And there is no, it's all a cover-up. Well, why is it a cover-up? So, well, the hotel may want to cover something up if he was assaulted. I'm not sure how they can do that. Uh, but the point is, is that um, it doesn't appear to be that. Doctors looked at these wounds and said this is very typical, even though the damage is massive. It's very easy to do that the way the body breaks and so forth. The fact that if there was struggles and everything else, you'd have all sorts of things. If someone was in a fight, they would have messed up hands, they would rip shirts, there would be blood everywhere. There's all sorts of things, and rich people don't get into fights. They call the police. This was a five-star hotel, and there must have been cameras and everything else in these halls. What do we have? No, oh, they're covering it up again. Everything's a cover-up, everything. Now, I do agree there's a lot of this going on, but we can't jump on the bandwagon of conspiracy, conspiracy. It's nonsense from what has been stated by a bunch of other doctors is that this is a typical break. And if there was a bat used on somebody's head, they would have massive trauma there way beyond what he did have. And that's true. If you hit somebody in the head with a bat, you're going to have all sorts of collateral and other damage. There certainly is many ways, and people forget because they're not old enough, William Holden, the famous Hollywood actor, uh, who hit his head on a bureau next to his bed and died from it. Wasn't found for three days. So the whole idea is easy to hit your head. There are all sorts of things, sinks, tubs. Um, there are uh, bureaus. Uh, that are next to you. There's all sorts of things. Even the little refrigerator in the room that fancy hotels have. There are tables everywhere. So you, there's many places you could hit your head easily. You just trip, you fall, and the game is over. You know how many people are hurt every day from their house? The, one of the most dangerous places in your life is your own house. People are, are hurt in their houses all the time. They slip, break knees, and kill themselves by getting in and out of the tub. So we have to be very careful that everything is in some sort of conspiracy theory thing. We need to, if we had a non-corrupt system, we wouldn't have to worry about that. They would investigate it, they would look at the tapes, they would make sure, and everybody would understand that. The, to think that some sort of uh, situation happened in this hotel is stretching things, unless there's a cover-up of, of course, people being assaulted in fancy hotels, and there may be, but I have no idea what their security is or not in these types of hotels. So, but you would think that was a fairly, I mean, it's $1,000 a night to stay at that uh, particular, was that the Ritz-Carlton? Um, so the whole idea, so it was quoted by somebody who uh, claimed they were going to get his room. So all of that uh, we have to look at and we have to state to the facts here and we need to find solutions, but that's it. Now, will that ever happen? Well, as I said, it's not going to happen. People are not going to start uh, anti-corruption boards are not going to look into anything and they're not going to follow through on this because there's too many higher ups that would get caught. So, But you can take care of yourself and there's ways to do it. We need to vote with our pocketbook and we need to support organizations that are doing something. And that isn't uh, the Cancer Society, the Heart Association or whatever you've been told. is a, How is that a good organization? They've had trillions of dollars and they haven't had a single breakthrough. The Cancer Society has done nothing. Neither has the Heart Society. As a matter of fact, they've given us a lot of bad. All of these other people are doing what? I don't see it happening. Let all the rich 
rich people and there seems to be endless amounts of uh, trusts and charities set up. Yet we're, what's happening in the world? Gates has billions and billions of dollars and he gives out a lot of this. But what, what really has happened? Well, I don't see anything happening. I see nothing happening at all. Matter of fact, Gates is researching how to make better nuclear power plants. Huh? Yeah, seems like you're a little bit off the mark there, but that fits into the controllers who don't want him to put up uh, plants that do something uh, out of the ordinary, because that's an industry, nuclear power, which is uh, destroying the entire planet. So um, all of this is what we have to look at and what can be done. So people can do things. And if everybody got together and supported uh, particularly organizations or groups of people that did something, the, evolve, the world would evolve. And if we put enough pressure and form anti-corruption uh, organizations, well, what's going to happen is uh, things will change. But that doesn't happen because everybody is um, pretty much scattered around. Uh, it's it's uh, pretty much unbelievable what goes on, but you have to be focused and you can do something and you work with it. But it's not about helping the world. It's about helping yourself to stabilize, to get through this mess. So hopefully you can go up to a higher level and escape reincarnation. That's the ultimate goal. And how do you do that? Well, uh, there are ways of doing it. and We lay out a lot of this stuff. So stay tuned uh, for more to come.